Hey, this is Moscrom. Welcome to my first of three videos about modding TaxiNut. TaxiNut is written in Java, so to be able to mod TaxiNut, uh, you have to learn a bit about programming in Java. The goal is to get you set up with a working starting point that is a Java development environment called Eclipse and a mod for TaxiNut loaded into it that you can then tinker with and expand your uh, feeling for Java and modding in TaxiNut in a comfortable way. Uh, there are three videos. Uh, this one is the basics of Java. The second video will be programming in Java with Eclipse, where you learn a bit more about programming in Java. And the third one uh, will create a mod for TaxiNot that adds a planet to TaxiNot using Eclipse and Java. Uh, this document that I'm reading off or I'm using as a guide for this video, you can find yourself at www.mosgrom.net slash taxinot slash modding taxinot.html it contains links to the various tools that I use and most of the text of what I'm saying here so what is Java? Uh, Java is a programming language and runtime environment that's been around since the 90s it tried to free developers from the shackles of a particular platform like Windows to its write once run anywhere promise uh, this guarantees developers that the same code written on one platform uh, will run on all other supported platforms as well without modification. Uh, it also introduced uh, automatic memory management which greatly reduces the complexity of programming and thus the possibility of bugs. I'm thinking of memory leaks, dealing with pointers, it all can be quite complicated. Java takes that out thanks to automatic memory, memory management. Uh, Java is not the same as JavaScript. Uh, there are four components to creating and running a Java program. Uh, first, there's the source code, which is a set of plain text files, like you type in Notepad, uh, with a .java extension containing the program code in the Java programming language. Second, there's an application called a compiler. This is used to convert the .java source files into .class files. Third, there's the resulting Java class files. Uh, these are basically the finished application files that you give to your customer, for example, uh, similar to executable and DLL files for regular Windows applications. And last, <clears throat> there's the uh, Java Virtual Machine or JVM. Uh, this is used to run the class files in a similar way that a video player application is used to uh, run MP4 files. So the source code uh, we will create ourselves using Notepad. Uh, the compiler and JVM are part of a well, what's called a Java Development Kit or JDK. This is just a set of applications that you can download for free from several sources. With this demonstration, I will use the Open JDK. Uh, I've set up a command prompt my environment. Uh, to use these tools. The tools that come with the OpenJDK uh, run from the command prompt. If you don't know what the command prompt is, um, it's basically a way to, it's another way to interact with your computer, but purely through text. Uh, I can type commands in here and those commands will be executed. For example, I can type notepad and it will start notepad. Or I can also look at my file system like you can do in Windows Explorer. For example, here, here in File Explorer, you can see I'm in desktop dev folder. And here you can see the same user, Jasper, desktop dev. I'm in the same folder. I can type uh, the dir, a command here, to list what's in the folder. That's a basic what a command prompt is. Um, so the Java tools I'll be using will be the Java compiler, which is called that came with the Java development uh, kit that I downloaded. It's called Javac. I'll just have it print out the version here. And the Java virtual machine, which is called Java. And I also will just have it print out the version now. So the only that's the only reason I'm using this because the tools come that come with the Open JDK uh, are command line tools. You will not be using this. Um, there's no need for you to download the JDK or do anything I do in this video yourself. In the second video, we will download and install a different application called Eclipse 
to run and create Java applications with. Eclipse includes a JDK and is much more comfortable to use. I only do this way here to de demonstrate the bare bones of what is needed to develop Java applications in an attempt to demystify the process. So, creating a Java application. Uh, in applications, you typically find types of things. For example, in Taxinot, there are things that are a type of ship, and there are things that are a type of planet, and there are things that are a type of NPC, and so on. In Java, a type of thing is called a class, and each of these classes is represented by a .class file, like what I talked about before. For example, in my own here desktop dev folder, that's where I do all my uh, programming work in, including for TaxiNot. Uh, here is a project taxi which is part of taxi not it's the main project really uh, I put my classes well the compiler puts my classes in the bin folder here and as you can see there's loads of dot class files here for example for achievements there is an achievement dot class or uh, what else dialogues there's a dialogue dot class for the fares you get there's a fare dot class uh, for items, there's an item.class and so on. Uh, each of these class files was created with a compiler from a plain text.java uh, file uh, with the source code for that class in it. Uh, so in my TaxiNop project directory, there are uh, ship.java, planet.java, and pc.java, etc. I'll show you. Um, let's see. Um, where are we here? SRC source net was Chrome blah blah blah. Here, there's all these .java files. So for it, 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 as you can see, it looks nearly exactly the same as the folder with the class files. For each class file, there is a .java file here. So there's achievement.java, for example, uh, dialog.java, fair.java. Item.java. Each, each of these files contain the source code for that class in plain text. Here I'll show you achievement.java. If, if I open that with Notepad, you can see this contains the source code for the achievement class. Right. So um, let me just get back to development folder. Right. Um, so we're going to create an application that has people in it and for the purpose of this demonstration people are a type of person so for that uh, we will create a class called person we do this by creating a text file called person.java in notepad and we're going to type our source code or our definition for the class in the java programming language in this file so let's start that um, Right, so I'm here in desktop dev. I'll create a folder for it called hello, and I'll just go into it. So if I have a type there, you can see it's empty here. See it here in Windows File Explorer as well, it's empty. So I'll create with notepad person.java, the source file for the person class. And we'll start typing our class de definition in here. I'll increase the size of that a little bit. Uh, like this. So, let me save it. So, all we have done now, don't worry about the syntax of this or about what this all means. Uh, we've just defined a class called person. That's all we've done. It does nothing yet. So, what might the person do or have? Uh, it might have a name. And it might, uh, what could it do? It could say hello. So um, the way to have classes do things is through functions. Or in Java, they call this uh, methods. So if we want this person to be able to say hello, we'll give it a method that's called say hello. Methods are basically little bits of named little named bits of code that get executed whenever that name is used 
So here we'll create a method called say hello. Um, let's see. Right, so all we have here is a method uh, defined on the class person that's that's called say hello. It does nothing yet. There's no uh, code in the body of that method. Right. Um, so what we wanted to do is, or what I wanted to do, is it will print out something like when we run it here on the command line, it will print out something like, hi, uh, hello, I'm, and whatever the name of the person is, right? So I'm just going to type some code here. Don't worry about what that means. But that basically does that. One thing to note maybe is here how I uh, use name. That references this name. So they will be the same thing. It's called a variable, or in this case, because it's on the class, it's called a class member. Anyway, we won't get into that now. So we've now defined a person with a name and that can say hello. So that's, that's basically our application. So let's try and run this in Java. So first we have to compile the source file into a class file. And we do that with the Java compiler, Java. So Java. Uh, person .java. There were no errors because also we print those, so everything is fine. So we should now have a person.class file created by the compiler, and indeed, here it is person.class. You can see it here as well person.class. That is basically our application. That file to run that application, we need the Java virtual machine, it's called Java here, and we just specify what class we want it to run. It will just look for a uh, class called uh, person. Now, as you can see, it did something weird, an error. Main method not found in class person. Please define the main method as public static void main, blah, blah, blah. I did that on purpose. Uh, the Java virtual machine, when it starts uh, your program, needs to know where to start and uh, Normally, it looks for a method called main. So this is a method called say hello. It, it's looking for another method called main. We haven't defined that in this person class yet. Normally, you probably would put that method in another class. Your application might have many classes and you'll put it maybe in a class called main or maybe in a class that's called after your application. For example, in TaxiNot, my main method is defined in the taxi class. Um, so we're going to add a main method here. Again, don't worry about all the what that looks like. It's just sort of boilerplate. Right, so now we have a main method. Again, it does nothing in the body. There's no code in the main method yet. If we compile it again now, so Java person.java and then run it, it does nothing. It just doesn't print anything, does nothing. And th yeah, that is because we have no code in the main body uh, of the main method yet. So, um, let's see. So what are we gonna do in here? Well, we want to have a person say hello. Now, what is important to understand is that when you define a class uh, that is that represents people in general that represents what a person in general is in generally a person has a name and they can say hello but this does not this is not a specific person in your application yet for that we have to instantiate uh, a person from this class uh, think of classes as a blueprint from which you make uh, persons so we do that as follows. And what this does is it creates a variable, what's called a variable uh, called P1 uh, of type person or of class person. 
and it assigns a new instance of the person class to it. So now we have a unique person. For example, um, we can use this P1 throughout our code to refer to this person from now on. So for example, we can tell P1 to say hello. I type in p1 dot say hello like this so this particular person will now say hello uh, this will basically just call this is a call to this method say hello and will then execute this code so maybe we should run this now and see what we got uh, yeah, fuck person dot java I have to recompile it again you don't recompile a customer or your you know in your final situation you don't recompile every time you give your customer the class files and they just run it right it's just because i'm changing the source code every time now so let's run the resulting class java that person hello i'm null so that's not really what we want either the problem obviously is that we've not yet assigned a name to the person um so for that um what we can do is well we're going to assign an, a name to uh, this name to the name of the person an actual name so let's maybe start with lois this person will call lois uh, to do that uh we're going to use a special function called a constructor now if you notice this here it has these ellipses at the end, or what do you call them, parentheses. And here as well, it's sort of similar notation. That's because this is also really a function, but it's just a special function called a constructor. Now there's always a constructor defined on your class already implicitly. You don't have to type it. This is already defined, it's assumed. But if there's something you need to do, uh, to create your new instances for example in our case for the person class instances of the person class need a name assigned to them then you can do that in the constructor so we're going to add our own constructor to it um, which is just like defining a method so uh, person just like this we've now defined a person constructor and in it code that gets ex executed when that is called uh, will assign a name so Lois David recompile it again uh, and as you can see it now says hello I'm Lois so here we've assigned the text Lois to this class member called name and here that class member is used to insert that text into this text right and then print it on uh, the command line okay and now finally this is not really ideal uh, because let's say we have another person person p2 oh this new person and we want this also to say hello so we do we, p2 is the second person say hello if we compile and run this uh, java person dot java java person they both say hello i'm lois but we don't want everybody to be lois well I don't um, so we want this to be somebody else maybe we want this to be Clark so how do we indicate that this is Lois and this is Clark uh, now one thing that you can do with methods is add parameters to them some people call them arguments I'll call them parameters here um, for example here in main for example this main function already has a parameter called args. I can use this args here in my uh, body of my method, like variables like p1 and p2, to do stuff with it. I won't get further into that. 
but let's say we're going to change say hello bit to say hello to somebody specific and we'll give this method uh, a parameter of who we're saying hello to so um, we'll call it other right so now we're going to make the this go like hello or sorry hello uh, other i'm and then the name of the person themselves right so let's do that hello plus other now don't worry about this i'll put a comma in it don't worry about all that uh this anyway just references this variable or this parameter here right so now our say hello to method we change the name of the method as well to say hello to as a parameter called other so we'll have to change these as well if we compile now here i'll show you javac person.java throw some errors you see cannot find symbol p1 say hello it doesn't know what say hello is because we renamed it to say hello to right but first of all we'll give him the proper name say hello to if we now try to compile it will still give an error because here method say hello to in class person cannot be applied to given types required string found no arguments so uh, say hello here needs a string argument you need to pass some kind of a string is basically a bit of text so you need to pass a bit of text to it so we're going to do that say so the first one we're going to do say hello to well, to me jasper and the second person is going to say hello to i don't know pierre um right so i save this so let's compile and run this and see what happens uh sorry person.java no errors that's good java person hello jasper i'm lois hello pierre i'm lois so this way you can see how you can pass certain information to methods um now, pers now we still want each person to have their own unique name. The way we're going to do that is uh, the constructor person is also a method. So we can also define parameters on it. So we'll give person a name parameter, except we'll call it just simply S for now. So now if you uh, call this constructor, whenever you call this constructor, you're re required to supply some kind of bit of text to it. And that bit of text uh, is referred to by S and will assign whatever S refers to to name like this. So just to be clear, this name refers to this and this name here also refers to this. This S refers to this S, sorry, uh, this, well this S, right? Um, so person the person constructor now is a parameter except here we still call it without so if we compile it now it throws up an error right because we haven't uh we don't provide that little bit of text that's required for the person constructor so we'll do that so i'm gonna put the names there so this is lois and the second one was clark Is that how you spell Clark? I think so. <laughs> Somehow I think there's an E behind it. Anyway, um, yeah. So let's try and what, what this does. So we compile it again. Uh, Person.java. No errors. And we run it. Hello, Jasper. I'm Lois. Hello, Pierre. I'm Clark. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted. So. I think that's enough. I hope this gives you some idea of how Java applications are created and a little bit about the start of how the Java programming language works. I hope I didn't put you off. In the next video, we'll be downloading a much easier tool called Eclipse that takes out some of these steps and adds a lot of helpful things 
the arsenal of tools and we'll be getting more into how to program in java i hope uh, i'll see you there then